Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, yet another in the series of the Summer of Blake 7. This is number 5, Pressure Point. Yes, as the second Summer of Blake 7 moves along its merry way, we get to perhaps the most important episode of the whole of the second series. I'm assuming you've seen it. Is it possible to spoil something from, well, the late 70s? Well, it is actually, because if you've not seen it, it's new to you. Oh, let's put our cards on the table. We're not talking about anything that isn't spoilery. This is the one where Gan leaves. Dies. Is no more. Is wasted. No, Gan's wasted in most of the stories. And by that I mean that his character is a complete waste. You've got a few interesting plot points earlier on, but that's about it. So, pressure point. Where Blake decides to get just a bit too cocky and try and take the fight back to Earth. Do you ever get the feeling that you've done something, only to check your notes and discover that you really haven't? Well, that's how I feel about this particular podcast. I could have sworn that I'd spoken at great length about the way that the climbing down the little ladders changes colour and they use the same set over and over again and they still manage to build tension and that the computer complex is underground but it's all just a massive con and that it's out there somewhere but nobody really knows where and that would involve the moving of data faster than the speed of light. But let's not be bothered by little things like the laws of physics and all that kind of nonsense because this is sci-fi and we're sure that computers can move faster than the speed of light and that kind of thing. And everything's controlled by one specific point, because that's always a good idea. All your eggs in one basket. Yeah. But enough about the failings of the Federation, and the way that they are clearly the same Federation that's in Star Trek, just gone corrupt. No. This is a story of betrayal. Betrayal by Servalan to Kastabi, Kastabi's daughter. Blake's betrayal of his own ideals. Blake's disappointment that second when he finds out that it's just one big room and it's all been pointless it's wonderful it ranks with the foot stomping in 1984 it ranks with some of the best narrative you'll ever come across it's a great story this is a great episode i mean yes there are there are moments that you go a little bit cringeworthy things like the self-repairing computer tape that apparently is radioactive but not really and all that business of the highly defense area and of course the genius stroke of using that little cottage as a defense mechanism yes you too can go on holiday to the cotswolds and pretend you're in blake seven ah there's not a lot of sci-fi that does that so yes i did think i'd recorded this already but perhaps that's because this is the story that's in my head quite a lot Yes, the demise of Gan and the fact that the maths for the programme is now completely messed up and Blake's going to go off into some sort of weird self-delusional spin. All to be taken into consideration, I'll grant you that. But for me, one of the best episodes of Blake 7 going. You can't argue with that. Yes, Serverland's relationship with Kastabi is odd and, well, as for the business with, with Travis... Weirdly said, soonest mended. I like this version of Travis. I truly do. But he is a different Travis. And I just think it would have been better if they'd bothered themselves to create some sort of different backstory. Or at least mentioned why he looks different. Because you could have done that. You could have scarred him up even more. You could have had him in some sort of accident. But that's neither here nor there. Because this series is Travis's arc. The insanity is building. You can see it here. The fact that the guy wants to use a strontium grenade. Now I know that it's a sort of Terry nation sort of thing where you just go mental and say, oh, that sounds a bit dangerous and scary. No, no, a grenade that had strontium in it would be ridiculous. It would take out an entire town. 
It would poison everyone. It's a dirty weapon. Dirty weapon. Yeah. Not important. Look, it's a great story and one that I thoroughly enjoyed. Moving on to some more Blake 7? Probably. Perhaps more Dice Dad. Perhaps more Doctor Who. You just never know, for this is the summer of podcasting and I'm with you all the way through. So until next time, be seeing you. On the 3rd of September 2016, Hooverville 8 will be with us. Possibly the friendliest convention in the whole of the UK. This year's guests include, but are not limited to, Kai Owen from Torchwood, Michael Jason from Doctor Who, the Valiard himself, Katie Manning, Joe Grant, Eric Sayward, Sophie Aldred, good old ace, and Matthew Dale. For more information and to book your ticket, visit the Derby Quad website, www.derbyquad.co.uk. D-E-R-B-Y-Q-U-A-D.co.uk. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>